All right. How do y'all feel off your four billion mile hike? <laughs> it's not usually this hot out in this part of Seoul. The next closest star at this scale, what inch? Are the next star is approximately the star at four light years. Look up in the sky. All right. The stars that you see in the sky are pretty far. They are tens to hundreds to thousands of light years away. But me, which means when you look at those stars, you're not seeing those stars how they are today. You're seeing those stars how they were tens to hundreds to thousands of years ago. Our sun, for example, is 93 million miles away. The light that we get from our sun is about eight and a half minutes old. So, just theoretically, it's not going to do it now, but let's say our sun was to blow up right now. We would not know for another eight and a half minutes. So live every eight and a half minutes of your life like it's your last. Well, I'll go ahead and get started. Here we are. Very, very, very cool telescope. I like your shirt. You want to have 51 action there? 51. Yeah, it's a good one. Good galaxy. <laughs> yeah, I've got the NGC right there. I didn't know that's a cool shirt. All right. Sorry. A little sidetrack there. Um, this right here is a very, very cool telescope. This right here is the telescope that discovered the planet Pluto. It's the only telescope to discover a planet in our solar system in the 20th century. It's also the only telescope to discover a planet outside of Europe. Both Uranus and Neptune were discovered over in Europe. And we discovered Pluto! Woo! Yeah! Oh, come on, guys. This is exciting stuff. I mean, we found the smallest and the furthest. We got one of them, all right? And it was a very, very, very you know, detailed search. I mean, Percival Lowell started that whole search back in 1905. Why did you start the search? Mathematics. Mathematics. Yes. What was he studying? Uranus. Yeah, that was one of them. Uranus and Neptune. He was studying both those planets. And you notice that both those planets going around the sun had a slight discrepancy or a wobble in their orbits. Now, wobble, Percival thought, was due to a ninth planet, a planet that would pass by Uranus and Neptune at times and pull on them to cause their orbits to be out of whack. So mathematically, Percival will study that, and in 1905, he started the search. The math that he did, he thought, told him how far, how big, and where this guy to look. So Lowell searched all the way up until 1916, and then what happened? He went kaput. He died at the age of 61, he was a stroke in 1916. So, what was going to happen to the observatory? Well, was the wife going to get it, or was the Lowell family going to get it? Well, Constance, Percival's wife, really was not interested in what was going on here. So she really didn't, you know, whatever happened, happened. The Lowell family wanted to keep it going. They wanted research to continue. So the Lowell family did acquire the observatory, and in 1927, research started back up. Well, one of the projects that was brought back to life was the search for planet X. Now, why were we calling it planet night to take the pictures? Because the telescope only takes pictures. There's where the film goes. We needed someone to stay up all night to take the pictures and stay up all day to develop and look at the pictures. And that person was Clyde Tombaugh. Why was it Clyde Tombaugh? Well, Tombaugh was sending drawings that he had made of the night sky out here to Lowell. He was from Kansas, drawing pictures of the night sky. That's where he was at the time. Just for, just for fun. He was an amateur. We were just, the observatory was just amazed by his detail in his drawings. So he said, hey, Clyde, you want to come out? Clyde said, sure, I'd love to. So in 1929, he pops on the train, comes out at the flag, starts using this scope right here. Now, like fit. Right inside here, right in there is where your film goes. That's where your glass plate goes. And you would set up a whole bunch of these glass plates, because guess what? You're going to be up all night long taking as many pictures as you possibly can. All right? So you take your glass plates downstairs, you bring up one at a time, you slide it inside here. Now all you need to do to focus this telescope is tighten these four bolts. Once those bolts are tightened, your film's in focus. Simple as that. So the light from the objects of the stars that you're looking at pass through the lenses. The lenses bring that light to a focus on the face of the glass plate. So it's a big camera. You got your lenses, your film, and your shutter. All right? So we got the film in there. Next thing you need to do is probably turn on the clock drive. Now, 
I didn't talk about the clock drive at the last telescope. The last telescope does also have a clock drive. The clock drive is a motor that slowly moves the telescope. Now, why do you think we want to slowly move the telescope? Earth rotation. Bam! Earth rotation. We don't move the telescope, the stars are going to move across the sky, and we're not going to be able to get a good crystal picture. So, clock drive on, telescope.